Greetings, friendos and friendettes. I am Omega of Team Dawnlight, and this is Detective Grimoire. Specifically, this is my first impressions of Detective Grimoire, a game developed by SFB Games, who you may have known from their classy, classy, excellently drawn, awesome art style game, Haunt the House, which was featured across many, many channels upon its initial release, and was actually pretty popular. Also was a Flash game on Armor Games, which coincidentally is the publisher of both that game on Steam and this game on Steam. So it appears that SFB and Armor Games have sort of a collaborative effort going on to produce these games, and in fact, this is actually not the first game to feature the character of Detective Grimoire. There were several iterations of Detective Grimoire in Flash-based games, on Armor Games, and other sites that occurred before this game, and in fact, this game was actually published on mobile devices before its Steam and wide-scale PC release, which is also coinciding with its Linux and Mac's Mac release for those of you that actually game in Linux for once. So, what is Detective Grimoire? Detective Grimoire is a point-and-click action-adventure game with a very, very nice, very colorful, almost pseudo-oil-style art style, which is just absolutely fantastic. Oh, it's so great. I, I don't know anything about art, so I can't speak to it. Uh, but before we get into the game, let's get into the options real quick. It's pretty bare-bones. You have an option for windowed mode. There's no resolution options, though. I... I can see why you wouldn't really think you would need them in a game like this. I, I mean, the game is running at my native resolution of 1920 by 1080 which is nice, um, but, you know, eh, I kind of want some resolution options from it. Other than that, separate bars, separate sliders for all of your audio needs, which is good, how many things do that, and of course achievements, because everyone wants achievements. Okay. But this isn't a game that's very graphically intensive, and to be honest, it's not really a game that warrants a lot of any sort of graphical uh, fiddling, so not really anything to worry about. So, I've actually played reasonably far into this game, 36% um, through. There is actually a lot of really interesting stuff to go through just right from the beginning. The game throws you in and gets you uh, inundated with all of its mechanics, all of its story elements, and to prevent from putting spoilers out of the rest of the story of the game, because this st the story is a huge part of this as an action-adventure mystery-solving game. I'm just going to start a new save file from the top, because there's pretty much no way to do this game without doing story spoilers, so let's get right into it. Yes, we would like to start. And as you can see, sound is very important to this game. As is also illustrated by the fantastic music in the opening, which I feel is a tad... How should I put it? Uh, better than what's in most of the game. The game does boast that it has a very nice soundtrack. It credits the uh, creator of the score, but to be honest, it's kind of hit or miss with most of the pieces. There's a kind of an ambient track that plays through most of it that's just not very complex, let's say. I sound like, an, I sound like a music snob. So this is our titular character, Mr. Detective Grimoire, and yes, I did just use two proper titles to refer to him, as well as our partner, Officer James. So, what you might be able to notice from the outset here, and I'll uh, stop talking for a minute to let you hear it. Get your facts straight for once. We're talking about a creature that's lived in the swamp for over 60 years. Okay, so it's a 60-year-old alien. I still don't see what matters. Yes, as you might be able to notice, the delivery on both ends is... Kind of, uh, on the low end of good. It's kind of unfortunate considering the... The competent quality to the writing. I'll say competent. It's not amazing writing, but it does... It's pretty quirky, and it does have a nice style to it. It got a few little hee-hees out of me every now and again. Not a proper hearty chuckle. Not a, not a very manly hearty chuckle. But it got a couple of little giggles out of me here and there. Uh, but that might just be aided by the fact that the <laughs> the voice acting is occasionally very awkward, so the awkwardness of the voice acting kind of lends to the occasional awkwardness of the writing and produces a kind of nice blend of awkward, which is probably not something you would hear most of the time. So, this is our police file. This is one of the files that we will receive as an officer of the force, and specifically as an detective. That is the wrong word for that. But... Uh, usually these little files will contain some very nicely drawn little pieces of artwork and then some information about what's been going on. As you can see here, Richard Remington is the runner of Boggy's Bog, the most creatively named bog attraction thing ever, and probably the only one ever, so I guess I can get away with that. And our job is to find out his murderer. 
to to uh, uncover the identity of the murder. So it's a it's a fairly straightforward murder mystery sort of plot. It's it's nothing incredibly special, but the characters are pretty interesting. And as you can see from the artwork itself, the characters are incredibly interesting in terms of design, even though their mouths pretty much never match up with anything they're saying. Which I mean, it's a small indie studio, funded by Armor Games, which. Let's be honest, does not have the budget of millions here. They're not making, you know, Bioware games. So it's kind of understandable. Now the game tells this as Chapter 1, A Swamp Full of Secrets, which suggests that there would be more chapters. And from what I understand, there is a an additional... I'm just going to skip through the dialogue here. There is an additional uh, Detective Grimoire that is actually in the works right now, Detective Grimoire 2, I believe they're calling it, um, that is largely going to be funded by the sales of this game, so I'm actually kind of excited for that after seeing what I've seen from this game. So, as you can see from the outset, and I haven't really discussed it much, the art style is this sort of faux oil painting style that you kind of think would look a little bit misleading and it sometimes it does kind of obscure uh, elements in the environment that you need to click on like that little gate over there is kind of hard to see through all of this wonderful oil painting stuff but I think from an aesthetic standpoint it's actually very nice it's it's not very often that you see this kind of art style uh, attempted and a lot of games just base themselves off of their ability with their art style but this this game has that as kind of a feature and not its main crux so you're probably wondering what all of this on the UI is. Well, as we can see over here, on the right we have mostly unfilled question mark spots. These will represent the characters that we will meet in the expedition. And these are the two known characters that we have. We have Boggy, which is this weird bog creature, which apparently became a cartoon. And we have Mr. Remington, who was the original owner and proprietor of the swamp or bog-based attraction and who has since died. And he has a very, very large nose. Oh, how excellent. So the UI is actually pretty intuitive. Um, there's a lot of different ways of managing or uh, sort of traversing the different uh, tabs that you can go to. You have suspects, clues, and notes. Uh, suspects will just give you general information about the suspects, what you know about them, which of course can be accessed from the section on the right there. Uh, clues will just tell you whatever clues you have, little files, items that you pick up, etc. And then notes will give you general information about the location that you're at, usually from studying objects in the environment. Now, as you can see, all of these different menus are kind of interlinked, and you can easily go back and forth from one to the next. But uh, it's more convenient just to click them from the left side. Uh, this is probably a carryover from the days of this being on the mobile devices. Uh, the menu is very similar to something you would see from there, especially considering the size of the buttons and how you would tap on them to access them. L very circular. Uh, you have your options menu down here at the bottom. Luckily, you don't have to, like, quit out. I would uh, make sure that you do not press escape when attempting to exit any of the menus, as escape will attempt to exit you from the game. Which auto-saves, which is nice. Uh, but it is still kind of an annoyance, and it might trip you up the first time. Hopefully, you won't have that problem. Now, we can't do anything initially in this mode except for look at stuff. That's where I need to go. Which will prompt little dialogue options, but as you saw, we have the option to go into what is basically walking mode, which will allow us to enter different areas of the bog and inspect it all. This is a feature I'm a little bit on the fence about. I don't know if I like it or not, because it's a feature I don't see many point and clicks using. Most of them just allow you to seamlessly uh, click where you want to go in the environment and move there. But this one has separate buttons for each, which again, I imagine is a carryover from the uh, days when this was a mobile port, as it would probably be too easy to just click on something you want to investigate instead of clicking to walk, instead of uh, touching to walk there, so it'd be a little bit hard to distinguish between the two different things. So it's understandable that that's still there. Again though, it's a little bit weird. But um, as you can see, you can pretty much click on everything, which is nice, it'll give you little tidbits, which are all oh so excellently voice acted by our cast here. They're, they're not excellent, I'll say that much. And this is kind of representative of the entire cast. I think this guy, our Officer James here, is kind of the best of the cast because he's taking his job so seriously. Also, the system has dialogue options, which is kind of interesting, and all of these are fully voice acted. It's actually surprising how much of the dialogue in the game is actually fully voice acted. Like, you'll see it later, but there's an instance of a little mini game you can do where you have to kind of pick out words and objects and sort them together into a... Uh, sequence where it'll kind of like make a logical statement 
And the character of uh, Detective Grimoire will actually just literally say out everything that it, that you put there. So you can make him say incredibly weird stuff like, My hat is responsible for the death of Sir Remington because blah 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 blah. I think I just called him Sir Remington. I don't know why I'm inclined to do that. So you'll see that later and I can, I'm can. i just going to skip through the dialogue here because it's not important. There we go. So let's go ahead here. And this girl is one of the other characters. Again, you have to really admire the character designs they have. They're really, really interesting, I think. I don't really know who the artist is behind this, but I should probably look into him, and so should most people. Whoever it is, or she. They did a really good job. Now, unfortunately, the girl's a little bit kawaii desu, but I and I don't know why, but whatever. Uh, so, the dialogue options. Uh, none of them really get you different results. Unless you're having to do a challenge, which I might have time to show you. Uh, challenges will require that you pick certain dialogue options that are relevant to the characters themselves. And in those instances, there are consequences if you get it wrong. But I've never gotten them wrong because the evidence they give you is uh, fairly cut and dry. And even if you don't know the exact specifics of everything, you can generally guess based on logic uh, what the answers to these questions are. But that, that kind of varies. And not every character has that kind of thing. There is a lot of dialogue, and there's lots of things to click on. And you get little notes from investigating certain things, which will allow you to later piece together certain evidence. There's a fence around the entire area. Alright, now. We get to one of the main features of the game. Puzzles! So the puzzles in this game are actually incredibly easy. A lot of them are physics-based, using the, um, the mouse to guide objects around them, the like. Uh, this first one's not hard at all. You just basically have to move this pin or that pin into the uh, latch space to open it. Which isn't that bad. We need to get this to be over here. Right? Yes. And then we go like that. There we go. So yeah, the puzzles aren't that hard, but they're pretty fun to do. Uh, there, There's a, a good number of them. And here we go, this is the best part of the game. This is the logical statement part of the game. Now this little section of what he's saying up here is usually an indicator of what you want to try to say, but... Look at the look at the nonsense you can do here. Look at the nonsense. Is it warm enough for my beard to murder someone? Oh my god. <laughs> It's 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 so wonderful. It is it is absolutely wonderful. But the uh, correct statement here is way too remote for Boggy's Bog to make any money. And when you get it right, you'll hear a little ding ding sound. It is really more fun to just put whatever statements you want there and just kind of like let them play out and see what happens. It's pretty funny. All right, so from here uh, we are instructed to go west. So you basically want to just start going west and keep going west. And uh, there are little objects like this in the environment that you want to look at because they'll be useful later. This is actually, pretty much all the information you can find is relevant to stuff that you'll discover. And you can actually start piecing things together from little uh, hints in the environment. Which is pretty nice. It, it does a good job of being a puzzle game and it actually does a pretty good job of being a mystery game. It's not obtuse and everything you do, to an extent, makes logical sense. There's certain aspects of it that don't make any sense, but for the most part, it's pretty logical. Alright, so let's keep going west. Now we have a, another little investigative scene here where we just need to investigate stuff. If you're not just clicking on everything, like I'm probably not going to be, and skipping through it, uh, you can get through the game really fast. It's, it's not a long game. But this is a, the kind of game where you're going to want to be looking at stuff, and you're going to want to be looking through all the dialogue. It's it's pretty interesting, even if it is incredibly poorly voice acted. Um, and again, while the story is incredibly mundane, the one that they tried to tell here, it is still worth watching. It is still worth taking interest in. Alright, so what you'll also notice down here, we can click on pretty much everything, this will give us notes. Which will just take us back to the screen. You notice that there are bubbles down here. Now, you can usually find bubbles on the water, and these will lead you to more little mini-games, which are actually pretty fun. Uh, the answer to this one, I believe, is three. In that mini-game, you had to trace back the vine to the one that was uh, caught around the lockpick, and then click it. Now, thus far, we can't go in there. Uh, it is requires a key, so we have to go find a key, but first, let's go talk to more interesting characters. So these are more of the suspects, quote-unquote, that you can investigate, and in doing so, you have little dialogues with them. Even the characters are... 
Well, they're not incredibly complex, I'll say that much. And they do have kind of shady motives, and it's kind of easy to see who the bad guys are. But, aside from that, the game does have interesting characters, and it does have, of course, interesting designs. I kind of always like seeing the designs from this game. They are very reminiscent of the the designs of the humans from Haunt the House, actually. In the way that they're very pale, and they have very odd geometry to them. But it's a nice art style. It's, it's a very, very wonderful art style. It's fantastic. Alright. So... Let's see here, your job. So, you've probably gotten the gist of what this game is about by now. You basically go around, have dialogue with people, try to engage in conversation with them, get evidence from them, start little dialogue options, and look at stuff. As you do in every point and click. And you get little bits of information which you can later use in little mini games, which you can have in discussing with people. You pick up items, you add stuff to your notebook, and you discover suspects. There are seven in total. I have one in particular I really like, if I can get to him, I'm just going to skip through the dialogue here. Eh, might pose less of a chance that you will actually get spoiled on any of it. Of course the game is very dialogue heavy, so... And it's all about the murder mystery, so... If you're not engaging in that, you're not going to have a good time. But I think, for all intents and purposes, the game does an exceptionally good job at what it's trying to do. And I suppose I haven't given it enough credit thus far, but the game is actually a... I wouldn't call it a distraction. I was going to say it's a very nice little distraction, but that would be unfair to it, because it's actually more than a distraction. It is an exceptionally polished, well-made... could be a little bit better point-and-click. It's probably one of the better I've seen, and it has one of the better sort of uh, series of mechanics going for it. It certainly has one of the better art styles. I mean, if you compare this to something like, oh, what was it called? Uh, yesterday, that game that was played by a bunch of people that, with a really terrible, weird, blocky art style and terrible shading and voice acting that was even worse than this series of voice acting. Very, very, very low end of good, but I mean, even this one has a slightly more interesting story than that, and it has more compelling mechanics because there are actually little mini game mechanics, and all of those mini games are pretty unique aside from the piecing words together. But it's ah, oh, this is so much more fun. All right, so uh, told me that Bobby Burl. Yes. I, I do really, really enjoy these. They're, they're the most fun part of the game. I, I squeed with joy when I uh, first saw them. Alright, now we have the option of a challenge, so I'll show, I'll show you this real quick. This is kind of the last mechanic you have to deal with. So from this, you have to basically use context clues and information that you were given by the characters to answer these questions correctly. In a very almost, um, L.A. Noir style. That probably isn't that accurate, considering you have the option to doubt and whatever. Whatever. But in this instance, uh, you're looking for all the right answers, which will get you new information about the characters in question, and tell you a little bit more about their whereabouts, their motives, and what they were doing on the night of the murder, which was last night, conveniently. So, if you get all the questions right, you get more information. And if you don't, you don't get more information. So you've probably seen what this game is about by this point. Uh, Detective Grimoire, available currently for about six forty nine on Steam. The deal, I believe, ends on August the 25th. Definitely pick it up. It's one of the better games that's been released, at least in the past couple of months. And it's certainly one of the better point and clicks that we've seen in the past couple of months. It's definitely worth your money. And if you're really interested, then pick it up just to support the devs to see what they're able to do with... De Detective Grimoire 2. This, maybe you just see this as a proof of concept, so look into it. My name is Ben Omega. If this looks like something you'd be into, go get it. Available on Steam. Link below.